Kentucky Grand Final. And uh, we're here, minute 15 out of uh, tip-off. Uh, both teams were just having a look through and uh, played each other in round one of the uh, tournament. First pool game and was the Kilsyth Cobras coming away with a four-point uh, four win. It's going to uh, believe, uh, looking through some past results as well, they've played through Australia Day tournament and uh, VJBL and both of those times have been about four points yeah. as well. I think it's a certainty this one's going to be a pretty close one. And uh, looking at their their first matchup of the uh, classic tour- classic tournament weekend, um, it was a, a big second quarter by uh, Kilsyth, a fourteen to three quarter, that uh, set them up for some success in that opening game. Absolutely, and and probably followed up by a fourth quarter there with uh, a fourteen to nine uh, finish to the game as well. So. Uh, Looking forward to it. I was watching yesterday the Frankston girls actually play against Nunna Wadding and uh, it was great to see number six, Charlie Fawcett. Some tough moves going to the hoop. Yeah, it always amazes me at uh, these under-12 levels, the um, the skills they have. I think it's certainly um, really impressive basketball. I'll tell you what amazes me, Mark, is the height. The height I'm seeing across the court these days. Yeah, I think they, uh, there's, they're all, they're all uh, encroaching on six foot. Uh, Tom, which is a bit intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And here we go, we've got tip off. You see Kiltside coming away with it here to start. We've got Charlotte Pope, who's going to set everything up for the Cobras. Nice pick and roll action. Hit the roller up off the board, unfortunate. as we retain it here. It's always about who's going to take that little patience to start the game, Mark. Who yeah. can get just the easy looks as we're going to see a travel call here. But uh, it's always about who can take the air out of the game and just keep their nerves nice and early. Yeah, Kilsyth looked really composed there and an unfortunate travel late in the possession. But um, overall, some really good composure to set them up. As we'll see some extended pressure here as, uh, as we talked about that height. But there's also length out there. Uh, for the Cobras and number four Niall Tong out in front as we'll see inbound a lot of uh, high post pick and roll action we're seeing from the Cobras earlier this morning yeah they obviously see it as uh, something that's got them to this point in the tournament as we get a beautiful move to the hoop you see that height again from the Cobras Frankston just holding up strong in there we're going to see two points. We'll go to number 12, Holly Bowman. we we'll see that extended pressure again. We're going to see Kilsyth come away with it. The 1-2-1-1 uh, one, one, one press is uh, causing some concern for Frankston early here, Tom. It's like an old Tom Marr team running around out there, is what I'm seeing. As we see, you break the press with passes. that height on the rebounds out over the top. You'll see the Cobras come away with it. And the coach is just calling for a bit of poise here. So that high on ball into the same action we just saw. This time we're going to get the bucket. Lovely drive there by number 14, Chrome Smith. That side pick and roll action from Kilsyth has uh, got them good opportunities early, Tom. Lovely drive there. Frankson be able to get through that press now, get the ball down the sideline. Now they've just got to compose. Compose themselves, get through their offense. You see Kilsyth up in the lanes here. Good follow-up on the boards there. You'll see an early timeout after a basket from Aston Barnard Rossley. 6-0. Couple minutes gone. What's your uh, chat as you go into your time out here, Mark? As you feel Frankston. Yeah, look, I'm just reiterating the press break. Um, that one, two, one, one's causing him a little bit of panic, and then and potentially an offense. Just being that little bit more composed. You spoke about it early, Tom. The uh, you can see Kilsyth have been really structured early on, taking their time, waiting for the perfect opportunity. Whereas Frankston are seem seeming to be a bit rushed. Um, probably a little bit of those nerves creeping in. Absolutely. And uh, I think for Kilsyth, it's 
just sticking to that that composure that they have come out with, keep crashing the O boards because obviously we talk about that height advantage, but they're just utilising it as well. They're working to get to the positions that they can get the O board and then uh, keep putting more shots up and at some stage they're going to drop and to start this game nice and early they have. We are just, just looking around. There's quite a decent crowd from uh, both teams here today. We see uh, Paul Grote, just a, a legend of the Frankston basketball, just rolled in in front of us. Um, but it's great to uh, great to see that mum and dad are here, but obviously grandma and grandpa do come out today and all the cousins. Uh, this is what the Classic's all about. Yeah, certainly a uh, great turnout for 8.30 on a Monday morning on a public holiday, Tom. And we'll see Kilsyth just forcing that turnover here again. You'll see a little bit more pressure here from Frankston up on the ball. We're back to that side pick and roll. As we spoke about, you clean up the D boards, you're going to get more of a chance. Frankston already looking more composed coming out of that timeout there off in the half-court offense. Absolutely. Patience in there. Trying to find the cutters inside too, which is really good. see Kilsyth come in, back to that side pick and roll nice take inside, little zero step there, and we see transition from the from the Blues Charlie Forster, unable to reel that one in yeah, Tong just got her hand on that one on the break and uh, caused the disruption and caused the turnover it'll see man Back to a little switch there. Seen a little bit of flow action out of this one, Tomo. Nice little find in the wedge there. You got number 14, Madison Chrome Smith. Mind you, last time these two teams did play, she did foul out with just four points. So at a 10 0 run, waiting to. Uh, haven't quite got the arrow on the. Uh, Score bench for us to see. But uh, we're going to go with Frankston. Nice baseline play up off the ball. There's the opening account, Charlie Fawcett. And that, nice. should, uh, that should steady them a bit from here, Tom. That'll give them a little bit more confidence uh, um, as the game progresses now. Mm -hmm. We see cutters through. And yet again, number 42 for the Blues, Tyler McCluskey. Just getting her hands on a couple of plays here, a few boards. We see just some basic five-out motion. A little floater. There we go. Now we're rolling. We're getting a bit of a ball game now. Just sticking to what they do run. And we're going to see the first three ball for the game. Unable to go. You clean up the board. You get to run transition. And nice D there by Niall Tong. Just utilizing that length to... Worry the guard out of what shot she's doing. Frankston come up with it here. Just composure. That's all we want to see is just some composure from the group. Pass and cut. And that is those drives I was telling you about, Mark, that I saw yesterday. Nice little jump shot. And we're going to see Kilsyth run here. Well done by Frankston. Defensive transition. Yeah, they've certainly sharpened that up in the last uh, last minute or so there, Tom. And it's looking good for Frankston. We'll see this nice little action. Hit the roller. Frankston just switch, switches on the uh, defensive coverage now. Is uh, just throwing kill scythe a little bit. Nice little hezzy. Find the player in the wedge. Extra pass. And there we go. Jarley Fawcett. Once again, she's got all six of Frankston's points as they start to get rolling. A minute and a half here. As we're going to see Kilsyth look to go to their first rotation. And as I spoke about, Tyler McCluskey just coming up with the D boards. And Charlie Fawcett going to the hoop strong, unable to get it to go. And stepped out of bounds. As we're going to see, 
number four, Chelsea Van Eek, check in. And uh, end, end of the tournament, Mark, what's your focus? As a coach, are you rotating early? Are you trusting your system? What, what's your, as a coach, what's your philosophy that you're going to? Yeah, look, I'd just I'd be trusting the system. By this point of the tournament, you also know a little bit about what the opposition does, so you should be pretty well prepared. But uh, I certainly would be looking to get, uh, get my players in early um, to get them comfortable in the grand final scenario. As we see uh, Anderson Mole just then. She's uh, creating a little bit for the Blues, number 20. Yeah, she's been fantastic um, mm. since that first time out. Her ball control against the pressure has been great. We see, we're just going to get underneath and make Kilsyth have to shoot just a bit further than layups. Make him Mc... have to score from further out. McCluskey has been owning the D boards as well in the last couple of minutes. Made a huge difference. We've got a last couple of seconds here. McCluskey, she's going to break it down against Tong. Nice, strong drive, unable to get it to go. And uh, that'll be quarter time here at the Dean on Basketball Stadium. As we see, 10 to 8. So, Kilsyth, first two and a half, three and a half minutes, go on a 10-0 run. It was then all Frankston for the last four and a bit minutes, 8-0 uh, run, with uh, just quietly zero fouls called. Very nice uh, defense by both teams. Good adjustments by the Blues against that flow action and the side pick and roll. And uh, be interesting to see what Kilsyth goes to now uh, out of this timeout or this quarter time break. Well, yeah, Frankston clearly showed the adjustment coming out of the timeout. Um, I could, you could see them going deliberately going under some of those side pick and rolls, which they were they were at first getting stuck on those screens. So, um, yeah, as as coaches, it's sort of a little bit of a chess match, and it's uh, now interesting to see what Kilsyth's uh, move is going to be. And uh, Mark, I'm not delving into my uh, numerology that Cam Mooney would. Uh, he's probably not listening at 8:40 on a Monday morning on a public holiday, but. Just quarter time in the first pool game was 10-8 to 8. with Frankston leading. It's now Kilsyth leading. Okay, so what you're telling me is we're expecting a big quarter out of um, Frank, uh, Frankston this time. Yeah. If, if we're going on the reverse theory. If we're going on reverse theory, that's what we're looking at. It is, uh, as we spoke about, there's uh, only a couple of rotations that have happened. Uh as we'll see, Kilsyth will start this quarter with it. And straight away, coach is just looking for that patience. Back into that flow action. On ball. Now we're going to get it to the other side. And just Frankston just disrupting Kilsyth a little bit here. Taking him out of that action, denying the, the cross-court pass. Yeah, it, seen. it seems to have had him a little bit frazzled in this offensive set. We talk about those O boards. You clean up the glass. Well done by Killsyth there. Just keeping the game alive. Ooh. We'll see that side pick and roll and Jarley Fawcett just getting her hand in there. Couple of deflections. Utilizing her length. Nice pick there from Tong. And we get a drive down the middle. And there's McCluskey again. Just clean up the B, the D boards. We're going to have a travelling violation. She tried to come to that stop. We always talk about playing off two feet. It was great to see, but uh, well done by Kilsyth. Keep the ball alive and just get themselves back on the D-trans as well, Mark. Yeah, they um, they definitely got on the break there. They saw Frankston had an opportunity and the girls worked hard to get back. There's Jarley Fawcett just, just getting a couple of deflections. Coach is calling for her to keep her hands out, but it's a disruption is all Frankston have done right now. Since that timeout, as we can uh, as we can hear Mark sitting here, we've got the calls for going under. As we're gonna have a strong drive there from Holly Bowman. And she'll uh, she'll head to the line for two. And that's uh first foul of the game. It's gonna go on number four, Claire Ratu. Nice form there from Bowman. Nice little snap on the net as well, Mark. Yeah, nothing but net there, Tom. And 
There's Fawcett comes up with the boards. We're going to see hands in here from Kilsyth. It'll go on number 24, Nail Tong. That extended pressure from Kilsyth. You talk about that 1 2 1 1 mark. We're just going to see compete here. As we'll see Frankston ball again. And it's. If I'm Frankston here, I'm getting the ball. As bringing both Charlie Fawcett and McCluskey up. Just trying to get it over the top of that first line. Because it then becomes a 3 on 2, or depending on how quick you're running, a bit of 5 on 2. See composure here from Frankston now. You've beaten the press. Go back to that ball movement. Get your cutters. Nice cut there. And we're going to get a foul on the play. Anderson Mole should go to the line for an extra. That that uh, offense there by Frankston really shows the value of a pass and cut. Just really open things up for Frankston there. Yeah. Uh, foul's being called here. He'll go on Colbert. The extras, no good. Strong boards there. As we'll see, Jarley Forster put some pressure on it. Nice drive by Holly Bowman and the foul. Little cross, get me down the middle of the lane and I'll just, just drop it in over the front of the hoop mark. Yeah, beautiful move. And the crowd is certainly heating up here now. They're starting to warm up. Their voices are from both sides um, getting very loud. You see Bowman, she gets that to go, and uh, as we'll see a substitution in here. As uh, Van Eek will take a seat, we're just seeing, starting to see a little bit more of those rotations. Nice steal by Tong to Bowman, unable to get it to go. Way to stick with the play, kill Scythe. And uh, Bowman just, just following up those boards again. You can see Tong from Kilsyth is absolutely patrolling that halfway line and she reads the play really well, Tom. We'll see. Just trying to force a couple there. Go back to your pass and move. Nice take down the sideline. And we're going to see an offensive foul here. Rachel Maypiece just... Uh, just putting the body in front, taking away the lane. Great, great defensive position. She worked hard to get in front, and she was rewarded, Tom. It's what we love to see. We've got 428 here in the second. And uh, as we talked about, that extended pressure. It's going to be a cracking, uh, just quietly, these two teams do play each other next week in the VC. So it's, uh, it's going to be a cracking game. Come yeah, that Friday. By the way, it's going to be a bit of a uh, revenge game for one of these teams um, <laughs> as they go head to head next week as well. Mm. We see sideline out of bounds here. We're going to see Anderson Mole just controlling the play. Gets it to Charlie Fawcett. We'll see compete on the boards, and it's going to be Bowman that'll come up with it. And foul will go on Charlie Fawcett. It's her first for the game. It's interesting to see that sideline play. It looked like a. Um, an opportunity for an ISO for uh, young Mole. And um, you know, she was able to cross up her defender and attack that baseline. We see a little hit the high post. We're going to get cutters off the weak side. A little change up from Kilsyth. Just play. There we go. Down the side. We've got a double team again. Nice follow up trap there by Kilsyth. And so uh, you talk about the little pressure points on the court, Mark, as a, as a coach. And uh, as much as we're going to use the volleyball lines on this court, but you look to get just over the halfway line, anywhere between there. If you can get a second trap, it's, uh, it's always vital to uh, generating an extra play. Yeah, definitely it amplifies that pressure if they know there's a second double team coming. Um, they can cause a bit of panic. We'll see players scrap for it. Frankston will come away with this. Where you got to play? Down the sidelines. Now be a scorer. Two feet. Unable to get it to go. And we're going to see another foul called here. That'll be Charlie Fawcett's second foul. 
So we've got Fawcett. And we've got Anderson Mole on too for the Blues. As we'll see her take a seat. And both both teams in the bonus here, Mark. Three twenty six to go in the quarter. We are we could be possibly in for a lot of free throws. And uh, just a an eight to two quarter so far. Two kill sites. So they're they're breaking my little trend that we uh, went on a little bit earlier, but that's all right. As we hear the crowd getting into it a little bit now. Supporting both teams as Kilsyth. It's going to bring it down. Let's uh, let's execute what we run. Coach calling for second side, unable to get the floater to go. We're going to reverse the ball. Nice high pick there. As you see, Frankston getting under, but nice find inside there. We're going to have a travelling violation. Good hands by the Blues. Yeah, Kilsoth showed good patience again, but um, Franks' defense held up that possession. Mm. As we see, you get the ball to the middle against the press. Good wall up. Nice follow. There's Bowman again inside. There you go, down the middle. Now you're going to break it open. There's that three on two that we spoke about, Mark. Nice D inside. We'll see the Cobras come away with it. In number eight, Jasmine Cooper. She's just going to gonna be hassled a little bit here. Nice patience. On the left. Follows it up. Frankston uh, holding up really well inside there, Mark. Giving up a few O boards, but not allowing an easy second opportunity there. Yeah, they're playing pretty clean. They get their body in front as we see um, them go under the screen again. Um. Good hands on the play there. Be a baseline. First baseline I think we're going to see for the Cobras today. Nice high pick. Good seal in there. And good D. Well done. As we see... And Manderson Mole, give me the foul. I'm going to the line for an extra. Yeah, she's been really good uh, this first half, Tom, and uh, what a tough finish that one was. Well, transition game by Frankston. Very good. We just want to see compete here. Straight away into that pressure defense. Anderson Mole on Holly Bowman. Just trying to take her out of her game. Gets a hand in there. Little deflection. But nice, nice read by Bowman. It'll come off hands. Frankston causing a little bit of disruption there with the pressure, Tom. Got the crowd into it too, Mark. Just, uh, just off to our left here. And see Bowman. Just going to rally the troops and just keep some composure. Off, little cutter inside. So those off-ball cuts from both teams, they um, they create a bit of difference. If if the defence can get caught uh, ball watching on split line, there it's uh, opening the game up a little bit. If we can get that that off uh, weak side movement, mm. and we'll see uh, Holly Bowman just take a rest here. Minute twenty-one. Just give her a couple extra minutes throughout the uh, game as we hear a little bit of the foot stamps. This might be just those nerves at the foul line for both groups right now. And it just follow up by Kilsyth. And there's McCluskey again, nice and strong. Now we want to see. Here's Anderson Mole. Little floater, unable to get it to go. Good rebound, keeping it high. There's Maypiece, just putting some pressure on. And they're going to force that travelling violation. I'm uh, very impressed. Uh, Rachel Maypiece coming off the bench. 
forced a couple of turnovers just through defense getting her chest in front body in front taking that charge obviously earlier in the game yeah, too she's been a really impressive off the be- uh piece off the bench and the energy she's provided for her team has been phenomenal and see, oh i'd love to see her shoot that three ball just there mark yeah if you're open let it fly tom we're gonna have a travel violation Franks is struggling to uh, get their offensive um, system going. Probably not as much moving offensively on the pass and cut and, and a few too many turnovers this quarter compared to the first. Um. Mm. As we'll see, uh, Neil Tong check in. As we go back to that pick and roll action, Frankston get underneath. We're going to have a jump ball. Oh, there's those arrows on the score bench that I was talking about, Mark. We get to see yeah, see it now. Well, the referees are talking over because one called a travel there and one called a jump ball. Um, the possession arrow comes into play after they have a debrief. I'm going to see baseline here. High screen. Good D by Frankston there. Nice on the boards again. Uh, Aston Barnard Rossley on that one. Just a couple, last couple of plays. She's just getting her hands on those boards, keeping it high as well. We talk about uh, as as coaches, we do talk about you ca- catch it high, keep it high. Don't don't bring it down. The uh, probably yourself, Mark, was one of those guards that used to just run past and have a swipe at it. Yeah, that's our job as pesky guards is to get in there and just cause a little bit of disruption. We can't play up up the top, so we'll have to disrupt down below. We hear this crowd, Frankston crowd, just getting a bit going now. We see a few of the uh, Killsyth Cobra boys have rolled in, but Niall Tong on the board. Keep it high, finish high. That's all we like to see. And that pressure again. And we're going to have a travelling violation. Is that... Uh, as I look at it, Mark, we've currently got nine players in the backcourt. Yeah, Kilsyth are really flooding the backcourt here and causing a whole lot of trouble for Frankston. I um, mean, can't get past it. Throw it high, keep it high. We see Frankston come away with it. And we're going to have the end of the quarter. Good recognition there by the referees uh, coming down. Seen on the nice big screen there. And, uh, what are you seeing, Mark? Yeah, it's, it's that press of kill sites which is causing a heap of disruption for Frankston. And um, when Frankston get through it, their half-court offense is looking okay. They, they get a lot, lot of pass and cutting action, which looks nice. It's just they're really struggling against that press break. And they're trying their ball reversal, but it's, I think kill sites are aware of that at the moment and seem to be uh, Tong in that middle line seems to be getting there and cutting it off. She's a huge disruption too. Absolutely huge disruption. It's just, you think the pass is there, but you then question it. Whether she's going to get to it and tip it or steal it, but it then allows for, as you talk about that, rotation to get the ball back to this side or the other side. Just isn't there. The uh, the trapper coming from the middle is doing really well, taking away that vision to get the ball reversal and uh, really suffocating the ball onto that sideline. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if uh, if Frankston could get one of their one of the girls who can probably throw the furthest. They can throw it straight over those first three of the press there, Tom. I reckon they're off to the races and it's going to be fast break layers. But being under 12, sometimes they haven't quite developed that strength to throw the ball that far yet. And um, it's why a press causes so much disruption. As we uh, For Frankston, as you talked about, that half-court offence, when they do get into it, their, uh, their pass and cut action and their second cut is coming through is uh, it's just opening up the game for them. It's uh, really, really catching out some of the Killsyth players and uh, off the ball, not moving towards, not jumping towards the ball. And uh, as we see, obviously, Anderson Mole and Jali uh, Fawcett are, are the scorers for the team. But uh, we'd like to see just uh, Tyler McCluskey just get going a little bit here. She's been great on the D boards. I'd like to see her get going on offense here. Just try and get just get a bucket early, then build on top of it, try and uh, ease the pressure off of the other two. Yeah, they just need a, a third scoring piece, don't they, uh, to get going. 
as we'll see an inbound here to McCluskey. She's going to have pressure on here. We call for it. Unable to get it to go. We see Frankston. Good defensive transition. Nice find there. Anderson Mould. That's a great looking jump shot. We're right behind that, Mark. Yeah, that didn't look like missing, Tom. We'll see Bowman has checked back in. And she's going to run the show. We'll see that. Sort of like a first option. Nice pick and roll. Great pass. On the boards here, Kilsyth. Let's just get some space. Let's utilise our half court. Utilise the time we've got. Make sure we execute our play. We're going to see Bowman on there. They go underneath. Nice Euro step back. We're going to see Anderson Mole here. She's going to be pressured up here. Good. Now we see that composure come in. Pass, cut. Jarley Forsen, oh, able to get it to go. She gets her hands on it again, and we will see Kilsyth ball. Yeah, we saw some great discipline there from um, Bowman defensively, getting her body in front, keeping those hands straight up. Uh, some really good pressure from Bowman. We see Frankston sticking to just a half-court matchup and uh, getting underneath a lot of everything here, making Kilsyth have to shoot long shots. Nice little handoff. Looking for the roller, not there. Good action here. Nice pass. There's McCluskey again on that defensive end, Mark. As we'll see, she's going to bring it up the court here. Just get the ball back to the point guard. Let's have some composure. Let's get some good looks. Little handoff. Little Cavs like action. Nice jab and go. Good follow. Anderson Mulch just, just has big boards in there. She's everywhere at the moment. She's um, playing really well for the Blues. You see Niall Tong. Got her hands in on the first one. Poke the ball free, but we'll see the second time. She's going to pick up that foul. As that'll be her second. You see McCluskey's just going to lead. Nice find in the wedge. Just a little bit too much heat on the pass there. As we talked about, Anderson Mole down the right-hand side of the lane. You know, put it up high off the glass and just let it drop in. Just let yeah, it drop in. Beautiful move from Anderson Mole. She's uh, she's trying to will her team to victory here, Tom. Lucy Frankson just taking that step off. And there's Charlie Fawcett on the break. Tong's going to chase this. Great contest by Niall, Niall Tong there. As we hear this Frankston crowd just getting going, Paul, uh, Paulie Grote just in front of us here, Frankston uh, life member. He's getting going. Nice drive here on the base. Good follow-up. There's those O boards again. Bowman inside. Just hit the front of the hoop and it'll drop in for you. It'll see just a match-up here from Kilsyth. Anderson Mould just likes her chances against that. Utilise some speed and she's going to be, as you talk about, those little pesky guards just hanging around trying to tip it out. Yeah, and then we see the discipline from Kilsyth again, just slowing it down, getting through their stuff. Um, I've never seen such a discipline on a 12 team, Tom. Mm. As Van Eek stays strong, foul be going Anderson Mole here. That'll be foul number three. Foul number three. As we're going to see some subs check in. Barnard Rossley. Look to see some uh, impact on the boards right now. As we'll see Anderson Mole check out. We're going to have a few matchup changes here. I'd like to see uh, Frankston. Just Rachel Maypiece. Probably don't need to be hugging that far over. There we go. She shifted off the ball. Must have heard me from the stands up here, Mark. Good, good coaching, Tom. Nice pressure there from uh, Charlie Forster. Just as we spoke about earlier, taking away that cross-court pass is, uh, really interrupts that flow action that you do want to get into. Yeah, it looks like the, me the message for the Blues might have been trying to kill that ball reversal, um, create that disruption and see if we can get out on the break and, and get, get Kilsyth out of their discipline offense. As we'll see a little line, sideline here. And there's Niall Tong again. Just in those lanes... 
And you talk about that discipline, Mark. Let's just get the ball out, get the ball through hands. This is great to see. We'll see. Back to that side. Pick and roll. Look at the cutter. Find the roller. Nice tap there by Holly Bowman. And there we go inside. That height. Keep the ball high. And that pressure again. They're getting a... Uh, Kills are getting a lot of points off those offensive rebounds. And uh, if the Frank Seals can start, just trying to get a little bit more of a box out going, um, they'll reduce their opportunity. As we're here in the third, we'll just go to McCluskey to bring it in. A little hezzy. Cross, good hands there by Barna Rossley. Good, get it through hands. Charlie McCluskey, she's going to be fouled. That'll go on Noel Tong. Foul number three. Interesting to see what coach does here. Yeah, what are you going to, what would you do, Tom? Uh, your, your star defender has got three fouls. Three minutes to go. I'm probably taking her out here. Not risking number four. Just keeping her out and then uh, putting her back in to start that fourth quarter and let her play. She picks up number four early, you let her play. Yeah, that's a good call, Tom. It'll be, uh, oh, the steal by McCluskey and the finish. It's uh, be interesting to see what uh, Coach Dustin Van Eek does here. Nice move by Bowman down the middle, a floater off the board. You see that quick inbound by Frankston? Just doesn't allow Kilsyth to set up. Try and speed up the game a little bit. And we see Fawcett. Tong gets her hands in there. We're going to see transition, and we're going to have a foul called. Just, uh, just pushing out there and putting some pressure on the shot. No easy one. Make her own of the line. You see, there's that sub that we uh, we did talk about. So we got a seven-point game, Mark. 2-10. If you're Frankston, do you look at a full-court pressure? Yeah, I'm not sure. They're slowly chipping away at it, Tom. And, um, you know, the full-court pressure has been... It's off, it's off the defensive rebound. When they've pressured, they've caused that disruption. I think they're good enough at getting back to cover the break. Um, but, yeah, I, I think on, on, a, on a missed shot, I'd be sort of amplifying the pressure in the backcourt there on Kilsa. See, this noise is just getting going, Mark. Grandstand's getting a bit of movement. And we see good box outs, good hustle by both teams. And we see Frankston run that transition. Euro step, unable to get it to go. And the foul's going to go here on number six, Charlie Forcer, to third. So you got Anderson, Mole, and Fawcett, and Tong, all sitting with three. For, uh, for Kilsyth, though, you look at the, the size. So Bowman plays that taller guard. She's got 14 points. You've got Chrome Smith, eight points as a big. And Barna Rossley, only with two points. But the job she's doing on the boards is just keeping the ball alive for Kilsyth. As we'll see a jump shot here. And there's McCluskey again, but Bowman with her hand, just tapping it free. And the point guard says, give me the ball. Let's get through the hands. Yeah, they're, uh, they love this. They're loving their offense. Get to that side on ball screen or handoff situation again. Ooh, and there's, there's that girl again. She's just working around the rim. Um, Barnard Rossley. Yeah, she's, uh, she's been really active down there. See, she goes to the line here. Unable to get the first one to go. The crowd's starting to roll in now. Obviously, there's games going around around us, Mark. Out on the other courts. But we'll see a minute and a half here. Just man to man, but we're over the top. See, Frankston looks really good when they try to get the ball into that wedge. McCluskey looks at the three, doesn't get the opportunity. Nice drive there. Good follow up. Give me the bucket. It's uh, you can see on that play there, Tom. There's there was three Kilsyth girls who overcommitted towards the ball, um, which left the weak side rebounding um, wide open and. 
and Frankston took full advantage. Juliet Gregory at the line. McCluskey on those boards, unable to get the shot off. We'll see Van Eek will bring the ball down the floor. As Frankston just find their matchups. It's going to get the ball through hands again. Back to that pick and roll action. Look at the shot. Going underneath everything here. Kilsyth just sticking true to what they run. Good pressure there and help by Frankston. It'll stay with Kilsyth. 41 on the clock here. Yeah, Frankston going under those dribble handoffs and on-ball screens has caused a little bit of uh, trouble for Kilsyth, who, who are looking to stay with their structure. We see inside. Nice baseline play. Uh, we go Van Eek. We're going to stick with Kilsyth again. See, you're going to take away that pass across the court. And five seconds. Five seconds right in front of the bench, and the bench is up, Mark. Yeah, it's a lot of adjusting there for the Frankston coach is to put the uh, person guarding the pass, just protecting that weak side um, cut. You'll see Gregory go to the line, hoop. Nice little pass in the wedge. She follows up with her, Juliet Gregory. She's going to go to the line for two. Another offensive rebound for Gregory. She was the uh, one who got the end one earlier as well. As the foul will go on number eight for Kilsyth, Jasmine Cooper. And she gets the shooter's roll on that one there, Mark. Drops the shot in. So we're hearing a few shushes from the crowd. We've got a few feet stomps. Unable to get it to go. Transition, as you talked about, that... Uh, Good placement by defense on Frankston oh. and McCluskey. Unable to get that to go. Pressure here. Good hustle play. Good hustle play. Just let it go. And uh, both coaches, three timeouts in this half. Still left. Both trusting in their players. We've got the boys in front of us having a look here from Kilsyth. We've got a final shot here from Kilsyth. Defense chance going, and we get a travel call. As we're going to see, as we're going to see a sub called here, we're going to see Anderson Mole come back in. Mm. Try to bring a little bit more offense in for the last three and a half seconds. Mm. As we'll see, number 40, Juliet Gregory take a seat, and Caroline Armstrong will come in. Anderson Mole steps out of bounds. She's going to be fouled first. Foul leading to the out of bounds. And she's going to go to the line here, Mark. This could be a stroke of genius by the coaches. Bring her in for the last three and a half seconds to get uh, their, their highest scorer um, another opportunity at it. She makes the second. Do you sub her out? Sitting with those three fouls? Yes, Tom. As she makes the first, and we're back to a four-point game. As we hear the crowds are getting going here. Good composure there by Anderson Mole. And we're going to see the end of the quarter there. End of the quarter, three-point game. This is what uh, this is what gold medal games are all about, Mark. Yeah, and the crowd's starting to get into it. It's so much so that uh, I couldn't really hear that siren, so it was just as well the uh, referee was once again on top of it as uh, the crowd was going absolutely nuts here, Tom. As uh, Just having a look across the other courts right now and uh, just trying to find that bronze medal game between uh, Danny Nong and Nana Wadding. And we see uh, Nana Wadding's leading 35-19 uh, in that game. Uh, the frankston Nana Wadding game yesterday, Mark, I thought was going to overtime. Overtime was my call, and uh, it's great to see that uh, both teams that were in that game are really competing, and uh, I can't wait for this fourth quarter to come up. Yeah, this is going to be massive, Tom. We see Frankston got some momentum there late. It was looking a little bit bleak early in that third, but they got some momentum going late by just putting some extra pressure on those, those offensive rebounds, getting that second-chance opportunity, and, and um, 
you know, and Kilsyth probably didn't get themselves going, uh, you know, get through some sets late. They had a few turnovers here and there, slowing down their offensive output. But uh, you can see all of a sudden Tong's back into the game, Bowman's back out there. Um, Kilsyth have uh, got their stars back on the court. Same for the Blues. We've got McCluskey, Fawcett, Anderson Mole. All of them are out there. So uh, we now get the crowds going. A little bit of goosebumps going on now, Mark. A little chills. So we'll see into Anderson Mole. We'll see just how her composure is. Good. You see Tong was trying to get that steal. She's going to step up, put pressure on. Not allowing Frankston to have anything easy here to start kill Scythe, as we see a lot of lob passes. As we're going to see, a nice block there. Barnard Rossley on trans. She gets the shot up, no good. And we're going to stick with kill side just, here. Just great pressure from young Gregory um, in transition there. Um, got there and made sure there was no easy layup. We'll see. And uh, just as we do touch on it, Mark, obviously long weekend for everyone involved. Coaches, players, spectators, but also our referees. They, uh, they come here with a learning opportunity. We see a nice drive there by Bowman. But uh, they come here a learning opportunity, but this is what they all strive for, is to get to that gold medal game as well. Yeah, and these two have done a great job all tournament and, and have been rewarded with the opportunity. We're going to see a foul called here. That'll be four on Jarley Fawcett. Six minutes to go. We'll probably see her take a little sit here. Uh, how, long, how long do you sit her for? We know she's a big scoring threat. How long does she sit for, Ted? Tom? Uh, I'd be looking, maybe that three and a half minutes, bringing her back in. Somewhere around there. See how the game's going. I'd um, uh, love to see the others step up here. As we see that pressure, Anderson Mole with the steal. She is everywhere today. And she's just going to, she wants to push it, but realises that there's no lanes there. Good pressure from Barnard Rossley. We see in those lanes, just, just getting her hands in the lanes, Mark. Yeah, and you can see um, Bowman from Kilsyth just caught, getting an extra help around Anderson Mole. She was after the switch. We see Juliet Gregory. Good feet in the paint there. Well done by Kilsyth. Good patience here. Little pass fake, floater over the top. Unable to get it to go, but keep it high, Mark. Rebound, keep it high. As we see Bowman down the middle. And now we're going to see just that composure again from Kilsyth. We'll see. Just help defense from Frankston. Just if you're going to score, you can score from a long way out. Well, yeah, and you can see kills those spacing probably wasn't what they wanted to be, and the coaches asked them to call it back out again as there was crowding, a lot of crowding of the paint. Would you love to see a few calls for shots there? McCluskey going in against that uh, by herself. We're going to have a traveling violation. And, uh, Credit to Dustin Van Eek. He is, uh, the way he has drilled these girls and execution is uh, really stands out, and I can see why they are in the final today, Mark. Yes, yeah, certainly. They're, they're patient. Um, getting patience out of an under-12 team isn't, isn't easy, but they're showing some exceptional patience <laughs> um, as they work it around for the very best shot. You see Anderson Mole catch and shoot. Not quite, as, not quite there. Good strong boards by Tong, and we see Bowman's going to push it. She's going to the hoop. Well done by Frankston, but... See, Frankston come away with it. How's Tong going to play this one? Nice wall up. Give me the foul. I'm going to the line. That'll be her fourth. What a tough finish by Gregory. She's, um, she's really um, stepped up this second half, and she's providing that other scoring threat we were talking about. Just gets herself to uh, five points here. At the line. Unable, just a bit strong. You see that ball gets to Bowman. Bowman looks. Great hands there. Yet again, Gregory in the lanes. Just uh, gets herself back on defense, disrupts the play. We'll see that uh, adjustment from Frankston there again off the passer. Good. Nice floater by Bowman. Strong boards by McCluskey. And uh, you can see Anderson Mole said, just give me the ball. I'm the point guard. 
Let me bring the ball up the floor. It's got a really nice crossover on our result, Tom. Nice Hezzy on the left hand. And oh. McCluskey, there we go. We're back to a one-point game here, Mark. 1.4 to go. Nice, there's Bowman down the middle. Follows it up. Good D there. We're going to get a jump ball call. We'll stick with Kilsyth. You can see the intensity from both teams is just completely lifted um, as this one comes down to the wire. As we'll see, uh, Van Eek just take a little rest here. Frankson going a little bit bigger again through those guards with uh, Jasmine Cooper coming on. Three fouls for Jasmine Cooper. So uh, as Bowman is guarded by Anderson Mole. And uh, as we hear, Coach Van Eek just calling for that flow action again. Good composure. Nice handoff. And we're going to have a strong, nice block inside. And are we going on 12 or 24 here, Mark? Number 12. We're going on Bowman. First for the game. As we'll have its first time out, I reckon, for this game. I don't think I've seen one. Oh, first time for the second half, definitely. Frankston early in the game on that 10-0 run. Yeah, and um, the coaches will just talk it over. Get a little bit more composure from both teams after the last three and a half minutes. Just a good opportunity for them to regroup. I'd love to see Kilsyth here go back to that high post touch. Throw it into the high post and get the cutters off of it. That um, really took it away from uh, Frankston's game plan of just getting underneath the handoff action and uh, might just open up those that weak side cut a little bit more, Mark. Yeah, I think the... Um Frankston have certainly adjusted to that, that regular flow or that side on ball action. And um, yeah, it's, it's time for Kilsyth to make that move. And I think that high post touch would be perfect. And you, all of a sudden you get some of their star players getting that high post touch and potentially just a rip through as they, as they um, focus on the weak side and they're, they're good to go. As we uh, look around towards the next game as well, we see the North Adelaide boys have just rolled in. But... Uh, Looking around, there is a crew that does a truckload of work across this weekend. And uh, I know Adrian Campbell is at the State Basketball Centre. But uh, his team includes yourself a part of that, Mark, at, uh, to have this tournament going. So just a shout-out to them. Great great job by all of you. As we'll see, just a pick-and-roll action. Frankston playing a little bit of Killsides game there. Side pick-and-roll. As we're going to see, just that composure. Get the ball back to the guard. And uh, got the three ball. O boards again, Barnard Rossley. Spacing. Jasmine Cooper says, let's drag it out. Listens to the coach. And now we're going to see, just underneath everything, Jarley force it back into the game with that fourth. Round about that three and a half mark that she did come back in. Killsyth's patience again here offensively. Frankston crowds getting into a little defense chance. We we'll see Barnard Rossley trying to make position inside. Well done by Ratu. Not allowing her to get that front spot. Might need to see some pressure here from Frankston soon. Nice drive. Floater's no good. Foul's going to be called on Anderson Mole. That'll be her fourth. Is that a shot or a pass, Tom? I'm going a floater. That's okay. my look, was a floater. I thought she might have seen the opportunity later to uh, just do the drop-off. Drop-off pass for the roll. Hmm. As we see inbound here. Bowman to the hoop. Just a little short, but follows up at work. Nice D there by the, by the Blues. As we'll see. Kick ahead. Juliet Gregory finds Anderson Mole. And nice size in there by Barnard Rossley, just to take the shot away. Still some fantastic passing from the Blues to work their way up as we see a timeout to Frankston. One point in it, 2.03. Chance at a baseline play. Looking at a mid-range jump shot here, Mark. Killsyth stepping nah, off? or I'm expecting some sort of back screen for a layup opportunity. Um, it's maybe a screen-to-screener action. It would be a, a, a nice one to 
um, and certainly hard to defend it, particularly at under 12 level. As we are, uh, as we see, crowds are rolling in. Frankston crowds getting going. They're back in this game. Kilsyth fans, they're just, uh, they might have just doubled Mark with the boys playing here next. There are, and those boys just making some noise down in that uh, Basel Victoria, front of the sign of the Basel Victoria there. Yeah. So, uh, Certainly a lot of excitement around, and those boys were, uh, were right into it, just close by to us, um, Tom, and now they've moved it down courtside to uh, get even more into the action. As we'll uh, see both groups come back out. And uh, Coach Vanek just reminding him, we are playing defence right now. We are on defence as we'll uh, yep. see a little bit of a diamond set up here. The screen there. McCluskey at the hoop. Unable to get it to go. You called it, Mark. Strong boards. Anderson Mole, mid-range jump shot. Give me the bucket. The go-ahead bucket from Mole. Poise is called from the Kilsyth coach here. Minute 45. Jasmine Cooper trying to break it down. Barnard Rossley. Oh, we get it. We see Tong on the boards. McCluskey. Charlie Fawcett. Unable to get good defense there. Just forcing into a tough shot. Cooper throws it forward. And we have a traveling violation where the crowd is off to their feet. And it's that, that uh, girl again, number 40. Gregory just putting that pressure in defensive transition, uh, causing that panic. Now I look at it, Mark. We've got uh, that full court pressure. Just looking at Tong. She is just rolling that middle line there. Well done by Frankston. Now you've got to compose. Good composure. Utilize your bounce pass. And uh, McCluskey just says, let's bring it out. Bowman nearly comes up with it. Got the hand in. And uh, I like how they're just letting them play here, Mark. Figure it out here. Go put the pressure on. Well done by Frankson. Can they freeze it? It's a minute 10. They've had it. They did this yesterday against Nana Wadding very well. We see only two fouls on the clock. McCluskey's got it. Tom gets her hands in. That'll be foul number five. Yeah, Frankson's got to be a little bit careful there playing that game and creeping too close to the half-court line. They probably want to get some space and get a bit more uh, bit more movement uh, offensively to ensure if they're going to play the keepings off, they can stay away from that defense. And uh, as we have a Hillside coach, Dustin Van Eek, just uh, probably calling that time out here just to remind them, hey, we've got to steal the ball. All right, I want you to go steal it. And uh, I know it goes against all the rules of we keep our hands out. At this point in time, you've got to go steal it. And uh, we need to try and get a transition bucket here. Kristen, uh, Christy McCluskey, coach of uh, Frankston. As we see uh, both of them in there. Uh, Bra make, Braitland Kerr as well. Do you think she's going to be making a play or are they are going to be making a play for a score or are they going to just continue that keepings off game? Make it a three-point game or...? I think you do need to go and put a bucket on the board. Go and, uh, go and extend this. Get it to that three. Make Kilsyth have to use that final time out to drive for a three ball as we are. Uh, we just have a listen to our left here. We've got the uh, Let's Go Blues chant going. Probably not as much as there was at the MCG yesterday between the Carlton uh, fans, but uh, we now get Kilsyth going. I'd love to hear the uh, defense chant. Boys on that baseline are getting going. And, uh, this is what finals ball is all about, Mark. Give you that little chills. You see, the screen's going to go for Anderson Mole here. Can't get open. Ball to McCluskey. And as we said, you got to steal. Go for the ball, Chelsea Van Eek. And uh, just saving a time out here, Frankston. We're just going to run the same. Run the same. McCluskey gets it again. Charlie Fawcett. Just, I'm just going to stand in the backcourt here and drag my D away. Yeah, she was ready for any turnover. She was ready to cover. 
Big free throws here, Mark. Big free uh, throws. You, you want her being the one to take him, Tom? As we go. We're calling uh, Frankston coach, Braitland Kerr, just calling the girls back. Get that D-trans in place. As a second's good. And no timeout taken. No timeout taken. Just need a two ball here, Killside. Here's Bowman with the three. Unable. McCluskey comes up with it. Got to get the steal. Here we go, Van Eek. On the break. And we're going to have a foul call. 12.4. 12.4 on the clock. What an important steal. And, uh... Well done, the Frankston girls are competing. It's, now we've got some pretty important free throws. As we uh, see Chelsea Van Eek at the line. At the line, the noise. Unable to get it to go. I'd love to see Barnard Rossley. Just come up with an O board here, Mark. Yeah, they'll be crashing pretty hard here, you can imagine. Time out if this goes in. Franks and Coates already called for it. And it's good. And we'll have time out. Both teams one time out to go. Good thing for Kilsyth is they've built up those fouls. Was sitting at two. Now up to the five. So they can foul quick here. Minimise the amount of time that is on the clock. Yeah, it'll be interesting how they play it. They'll probably go for the initial gamble. And then I imagine they're very, very... Uh, quick foul to just stop that clock and give themselves an opportunity with that timeout um, in their pocket. If you're Frankston, are you going back to what you just ran or are you looking to go get a bucket? Go and extend it. Personally, I always try and get a cheapie off one of these situations, try and get a cheap bucket. Um, if not, it's then to protect the situation. Get the ball in our best free throw shooter's hands. As we're going to see... Crowds are rolled in. Let's go, Blues are going. Got the uh, juniors up behind us. You can see the foyer slowly fill, filling up out there, Mark. So I'd say the other games are just finishing. Yeah, this is the atmosphere you expect at the uh, National Junior Classic. Big defense chant on the baseline. As they, uh, they do pack that corner. We'll see... Charlie Fawcett just standing near the coach here. Oh! We're going to have Anderson Moles here. McCluskey's going to dribble it out. As we're going to try and get a steal. Frankston are going to take this one, Mark. As the fans get into it, the girls celebrate. And, and a foul uh, call. I think we're going to have a foul side. called. Now, Mark, if you're a referee, foul called, are you putting time back on the clock? It's point four on the clock, Tom. Point four. Miss the second. It's twice now on the uh, score bench. But uh, let's see, Anderson Mull at the line. Hits the first. Ice in her veins, Tom. As we see, she's going to line up, go through her routine, and makes it. Timeout. Three ball to tie it. Quick catch and shoot. It's going to have to be a very quick catch and shoot, very Tom. Very quick catch and shoot. We'll see, uh, see what Coach Van Eek brings out of this. I'd uh, possibly say that Jarley Fawcett will go to the ball, utilise her length, uh, just to make this a tough pass in. Um, and I can hear the Frankston faithful just revving each other up, getting ready for a big chance and a big strong finish this game. Don't yeah. foul the shooter, Tom. Don't foul the shooter. Don't foul before the ball's in play. It's the only two. Uh, this this takes me back a few years to uh, 
Knox versus Altham. And uh, there was a three ball, two tie of the game. In the exact same scenario, a little bit more time on the clock back then, but uh be interesting to see what Kilsyth draws up here. And we hear that faithful gets going again. As we see. Who are you going at? Bunna Rossley got to shoot it. Unable to go. Referees pay attention to that siren very well there. And uh, congratulations to the Frankston Blues. Yeah, and what a game. It's exactly what we want to see from uh, the National Junior Classic. And both teams competed really well. And uh, as we see, just as uh, we do get a few uh, people coming up to us, probably my player of the game here would be uh, possibly number 12, Bowman, or number 20 from Frankston. Either one. I think both of them uh, just, just impacted for both their teams. Uh, for me, I'm I'm leaning towards them, but it's uh, it's great to see. Like Charlie Fawcett got a little bit going, but uh, off the bench, you saw number forty Gregory, number forty uh, Juliet Gregory. Just a couple of those O boards, put them back up, get herself to the line, as well. Yeah, there was um, certainly some. It was really pleasing to see some really great influence from a, a number of different players from both sides and. Uh, one which stood out for me was um, was uh, Tong all game. She she did the job defensively. Didn't get a whole lot of um, didn't get, didn't get any points on the game, but um, would have a heap of steals and rebounds throughout that game as well. Mm. And yeah, you talk about the impact. So for Kilsyth, you their execution and their poise. Obviously, a little disruption. Good call by uh, Christy McCluskey out of that first time out just to go under, go under and take away the drives out of the the flow action to then generate some transition basketball for Frankston, which was really good to see. And that's where they got themselves back into it. They got a bit of energy going, got some transition buckets, and got got a few easy buckets is what it was to really open it up for them. Yeah, and that one 2 one one press of kill side so, sort of didn't nearly have the same impact in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the sort of back end of the third quarter into the fourth quarter. It didn't... Um, Frankston worked their way through that and made the adjustments. As we see the... Uh, the Frankston faithful is just getting around them here. Just uh, the supporters. We will see on your screens. You'll see the signs and everyone move in. As uh, both the teams will hang around for presentations on court. And we will uh, we will hang with you very shortly. Might take just a couple minutes break whilst they uh, do get ready for presentations. But uh, just having a look, Mark, before we do take just a couple minutes... Uh, Nana Wadding, I believe, have come away with the bronze medal in the uh, in the other game. So it's great to see uh, the hard work that they've done and probably blew it out a little bit early as well is what that game shows to us. Yeah, set themselves up in the, with a really strong first half. And, um, you know, Nana Wadding were probably, probably a little bit disappointed um, not to make the grand final, the gold medal game. But what a way to finish your tournament with a strong performance in the bronze, to earn the bronze. Absolutely. And... Uh, we're just going to take a couple of minutes break here and uh, we will come back and join you for presentations very shortly. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Tom.
like to thank you for attending the National Junior Classic Under 12 Girls Grand Final Presentation Ceremony. My name is Peter Kazaka. I first had Kim Brown here somewhere. Kim, who is the Junior Representative Commission from the BJDL. Again, congratulations on the two teams, not just for the game today, but for making it through to the Grand Final of the National Junior Classic Championships. Before we get underway with presentations, I'd like to thank partners Sperling, Barbara Apparel and New Balance and Sports in Focus for their wonderful support. I'd like to also take this opportunity to acknowledge the volunteers who have assisted the BJDL during the tournament, coaches, team managers, club administrators and of course all the parents and supporters who have made this great atmosphere here today. Let's give it a little big round of applause. The first presentation that we will hear in the under 12 girls is the bronze medalists who are playing out on the other court there. And uh, can we have the team and the coach who come up, please? The bronze medal, another one inspector. Ladies and gentlemen, we go out the first of the bronze medalists. Congratulations. And now, as I mentioned earlier on, the teams strive to get to the grand finals, but also our referees do a wonderful job. And uh, I'd like to put your hands together for Jordan Allen and Nick Stutter. Uh, the result today didn't go the way we wanted, 
but considering where you guys sit, you should be really happy. Well done. All right. Thank <laughs> you. 
And now, we'd like to present the MP3 trophy for the most valuable player in today's final. And this young lady really kind of stepped up when she needed to with 17 points. Thank you.